Hello, and welcome to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you maximize your performance. And in today's episode 28 is with our special guest, Dr. John J. McGrail, PhD, clinical hypnotherapist. He's the author of The Synthesis Effect and CEO of A Better You, Inc. And his number one rule is, in life, have fun. And in our conversa- some of our conversations, some of the things that come up, me and John talk about making the good to great mindset shift and creating and maintaining positive change. And please welcome Dr. John J. McGrail to the podcast. And this episode is brought to you by RadioGuestList.com, the number one free radio guest podcast and talk show guest expert interview booking service on the internet. John or whatever's comfortable is fine. Sounds good. Sounds good. And um, I wanted to start a little bit about I was when I was looking at your website there, you were talking in your newsletter about how you give your 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 clients or your your readers um a little bit of um tips for their own hypnotherapy at home so like for myself i'm someone that uh, currently utilizes like a daily meditation to help me get in the right the right headspace for the day yeah but what what kind of um uh resources do you give your readers for helping them um add in the hypnotherapy as as part of their kind of daily mind, mind ritual Well, I I don't really teach hypnotherapy to readers. I do teach meditative exercises that are sort of, you know, hypnosis and meditation are very similar in the way they feel. So I teach a a very simple exercise uh, that I call the 21 breath exercise, which is really powerful for helping people enter a, a meditative slash hypnotic state. They just take 21 deep breaths, counting down from 21 to zero. And if you lose count, you have to start over. And by the time you get through 21 slow, deep breaths, uh, you're in a very, very relaxed, focused state. And then you can do anything you want with that. Just just calm yourself, prepare yourself for the day as you do. I call it pre-paving your day or pre-designing your day. And it works really, really well. But I don't get into hypnotherapy with readers uh, because that that is a process. It's not something you you really don't do hypnotherapy on yourself right right gotcha that's more of like um like the the profession as a whole you got to do several sessions to to develop that process right well it just depends on the issue the, you know everybody responds at their own pace uh some people respond very very quickly some people need more time because every mind is different Um, but as a rule it is some number of sessions usually once a week to start with and then we adjust the frequency of the sessions to the person's progress. Uh, but yeah, everybody requires whatever they need. And it's just like having, as you mentioned, I have a lot of different techniques that I use and everybody responds differently to different techniques. So there's both an art and a science to this work. And I could teach anybody the science. The art comes through experience. It comes through natural ability and um uh, you know, sensibilities and that sort of thing. But there's no set number of sessions. The only program I have that I know exactly what it's going to take is smoking cessation, which is one two hour session for 99% of the folks I work with. But for everybody else, it is just some number of sessions, uh, depending on what their sensibilities are and what their needs are and how their mind responds. Right, right. Because a big thing that I wanted to ask you was, I know a lot of people that you probably work with, everyone has their own set of um, uh, beliefs that are like kind of like been set in stone for a really long time. It's like how we view the world in our own head. And, and I feel like, you know, the largest challenge for myself and probably a lot of other people can relate as well as getting, getting caught with, you know, certain thoughts that just kind of, they're, they're like roadblocks, right. Or mental blocks mm-hmm. and trying to get past them and can, it can be really challenging. So what do you suggest to people that are running into the they, – they, they maintain a positive outlook. They live a healthy lifestyle. They're exercising. They're meditating. They're doing all those things, mm-hmm. but they're still running into this occasional bout. It could be a couple of days or a week, you know, within a, let's say, bi-monthly or a quarter. 
um, where they just, they're in this like mental block and they're just feeling like they can't uh, get past it. What would you recommend to someone like that? Well, I mean, again, uh, there's no one thing cures all. I would, you know, really want to understand where it's coming from and why. And I'd remind them that everybody has off days and off weeks. Nobody's on 100% of the time and feeling great 100% of the time. It just doesn't work that way. No, so no, for sure. People to make these kinds of changes do need assistance. And it's because of the way the human mind is evolved. We are all, to some degree or another, most of us to a great degree, we are all resistant to making change. We will cling to the familiar patterns of our life with tenacity. Even when the change is good for us and, and it's something that we really want, it's very difficult to do on your own because of the way the human mind works. So what I recommend to people who are stuck in patterns or habits or emotions or behaviors is that they get the assistance. And that's where people like me come in. We can help them or help them help their mind get out of its own way, so to speak. Get right, right. Natural resistance. That's the, that's the key to everything I do is to help people make change. Yeah, yeah. And um, when, when would you, how would someone know when they need to seek out a professional if they're, if well, they're and on yeah. their own and they're not making any progress and they've tried and tried and tried and they keep slipping back into the same old patterns mm -hmm. and the chances are, you know, they're stuck. If they're stuck, then they're going to need some assistance. That's probably the easiest way to describe that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to see what other uh, questions I have here as well for you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. How do you tie in? all of your experience because you got over 30 years of experience with teaching and coaching. Mm -hmm. um, did you also have those kinds of roles when you're in the military? Like I did. And as a matter of fact, I was, uh, when I was in the service, I was uh, designated as a flight instructor. When I was an airline pilot, I was designated as a flight instructor and a trainer. Uh, I owned a company, a production company that did mostly training and motivational programs. So I've always been involved with training and coaching and mentoring at some level or another which was what actually led me to this profession right yeah because that because i was going to ask because it's it's very they're all very different um um industries and vocations but so you've always been in that that kind of similar role of yeah. the right yeah i always ended up in that role one way or another and so uh, when I reached a professional crossroads and was trying to figure out what to do with my life, I realized that what I really loved to do the best was help people uh, in whatever way, help them perform better, help them grow, nurture. And that's what led me to pursuing this career, actually. Wow, that's so cool. And um, you're, uh, you're, you're an excellent speaker. Um, I, was, I was watching some of your videos on your YouTube uh, highlight reel there and uh, and it, yeah, like awesome, awesome speeches and just the way you communi communicate with your audience. Well, did that, did that come from, do you feel like that came from like, you know, your experience, all of your ex years of experience with, uh, you know, like being a trainer and a coach and then just your, your absolute passion for what you do? Uh, yes. And yes. And I also, uh, made a living for a time as an actor. And so all the, ah. training, all the training that I got as an actor, improvisation and performance it all really came together and then lots and lots and lots and lots of practice yeah yeah and you're you're um when you're in the vocation of like multimedia and tv and and your acting career was that was it was that just after you were in the military actually no it was after my airline career i went from the military to the airlines and then from the airlines into uh film and tv uh, at wow. first, first production and then uh, behind the camera and then in front of the camera after that and then behind the camera again. And then I, I switched to what I'm doing now about 20 years ago. And then is your, what is your PhD in? It's in clinical hypnotherapy. Clinical hypnotherapy. Okay, yeah, because I want to know like the, the terminology for it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you don't, there aren't very many programs out there. In fact, the program that I went through is, doesn't exist anymore because most people don't want to spend the time it takes to get it. Right. It was, you know, almost four years of work. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've never heard of like a, a PhD in, and I didn't even know they had a PhD in hypnotherapy. I thought it was just like psychology or social work or, um, I mean, there's, I know there's definitely a slew of different credentials, but, but for hypnotherapy sp- specifically, I haven't heard of that. Well, like I said, uh, not very many programs around. Uh, when I went, was looking for mine, I found two or three. The one I went for was the one that I thought was the best and, and it was very thorough. Uh, but because of lack of interest, I don't know that if there even are any in this day and age, I haven't looked in a long time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. But I actually was experimenting with like, I know you can't do any, you know, self hypnosis or anything like that, but like you were, when you were talking about in your videos and your speeches about positive suggestions, yeah. um, like the whole breathing technique. Mm-hmm. I did try that and that one actually really worked pretty well because it's very similar to meditation. So it, it puts you in that, you know, that more calm and relaxed state that you were talking about. Yeah. And as I said, hypnosis and meditation are very similar in the way they feel and they work really well together because hypnosis is great for and hypnotherapy is great for creating change quickly. And meditation is great for maintaining that change systemically over a longer period of time. So while they feel the same or very similar, they work on different parts of the brain and they work very well together. And it's not as if you can't do hypnotherapy on your own, but it's very difficult to be both the subject and the therapist at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to be getting that help from a, yeah, from a professional to help you. It, it um, to yeah. help. And then, you know, I, I teach my clients, my hypnotherapy clients, how to do self-hypnosis and meditation so that once we get them feeling good, they can maintain it on their own. Right, right. Yeah, because it's, it's like the, the biggest thing that I'm very curious about and very intrigued by is like how someone can develop a routine with your help. And then, you know, when they go back to, you know, go back to their, their place of living, that you know, how they can incorporate that, you know, those techniques and tactics into their life. Well, it's just simply a question of, con- of consistency and commitment. And if, mm. you, if you're consistent and you commit to it, you know, like setting out, as you do, certain amount of time every day for uh, a meditation or for a visualization of something that you're trying to manifest. If you do it consistently every single day, then it becomes a habit. And it becomes once it becomes a habit, it becomes easy to do. And that's how you maintain the new dynamics. It's just like a car. If you don't change the oil and rotate the tires and take care of the car, it's going to fall apart. But if you take care of the car and maintain it, it'll last forever. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with this. When you make a personal change, you have to maintain it. Uh, it's not just automatic that it's going to stay that way. Uh, and again, that's because of the way the mind works. We, our minds need reinforcement to ingrain and make automatic new patterns, habits, behaviors, emotions. Right. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's a big thing about the mind for sure. Yeah. And then, how can someone uh, utilize self-improvement and your self-hypnosis uh, techniques to build better performance in their career relationships and business? How, how can that tie in? Well, you know, think about it. Your mind controls everything. You think about, say, athletes. Uh, the, if you get to a certain level, let's say the professional level, you know, all, they're all professional athletes, but there are good ones and there are great ones. And the difference between good and great is usually – a mindset. Uh, So in, if you want, if you're doing well in something and you want to do better, then it's your mind that is going to take you to that next level. So it's pretty much the same process, except we're not getting rid of something bad. We're just improving something that's already working. Right. Right. I'm just writing all these notes. These are really, really good notes. I'm sure a lot of our, a lot of our listeners are going to gain a lot of value from this as well. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see what else here. Oh, and with, with everything going on with pandemic night right now, Mm -hmm. how has that shifted your, your business or how you, um, how you, you talk to your clients, are you doing a lot, a lot more speech, you know, virtual speeches or virtual presentations, remote, well, a lot more I'm, remote stuff? I'm doing everything remotely now. Uh, 
just because of pandemic, it's, it's just not safe to have people in the office, first of all. And mm-hmm. it's really interesting that the, the whole industry of presentations and keynotes, dresses and motivational speeches has sort of come to a screeching halt because everybody's preoccupied and rightfully so. So the truth of the matter is, um, you know, I still have some corporate clients that hire me to teach uh, classes, uh, salespeople, how to do, you know, video conferencing and teleconferencing and, and, and manage the extra stress that's involved in that because pretty much everybody's doing business virtually these days. And it does degrade the communication model a lot. Working on Zoom is much more stressful than working in person for a lot of reasons. And so I have a course that I was asked to design that teaches salespeople, customer service reps, even management, how to do video conferencing correctly, how to compensate for the loss in the communication that is inherent in the medium. But motivational and keynotes and those kinds of presentations really aren't happening right now because everybody is just trying to get through this mess. And yeah. So it's kind of that, that part of my, my business really came to a screeching halt in March. Right, right. Yeah, because it's I've noticed that like, it's definitely harder to get that that communication that message across when because you can't, you can't get that the audience like, you know, super into your to what you're saying, right? Like just just over like, you know, remotely or virtually it's it's the message doesn't come across the same. No, it definitely doesn't. And so if you're a sales rep, and you're trying to sell a a product to a, a new client, if you don't know the ins and outs of video conferencing and the the mistakes that almost every single person makes, you can lose a sale or you can lose a client if you're a customer service rep and, and you don't know how to compensate for the loss in communication. It's a very it's a very slippery slope. And and if you watch people doing Zoom calls or FaceTime or whatever or or Skype, it you know, they're all pretty much the same now. Uh, but most professional applications or, or Microsoft meeting. No, it's Microsoft Teams, I think. Uh, most people don't do it well because they don't know how. They haven't been trained and, and they make a lot of very, very crucial mistakes. So that is the probably the number one thing I'm doing for groups these days are with my corporate clients who want their salespeople and their customer service people and their management people to know how to do it well to make up for what is lost so that they don't just survive, but they thrive. Right, right. No, for sure. Because this, this pandemic has really created a massive shift on how we conduct business, how we're communicating, how we're staying connected. Exactly. It's, def- it's definitely made things much more challenging to stay connected, especially. So uh, that's, that's another reason why I'm so into podcasting right now because, mm-hmm. and, and conducting as many interviews as I can because it's just creating that, you know, that connection, you know, like keep that connection going, that connect or that relationship building going, you know, despite, you know, the definitely the, all the other communicate, the ability to communicate with people has been dialed back. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And your, your uh, McGrail, McGrail method of quantum synthesis, that's, that's a mouthful. How do you, <laughs> like what, what, what is the, what does this synthesis entail for, for our listeners and for your, uh, for the readers of your book? And I know it's part of your, you know, probably similar to part of your, uh, your book, the synthesis effect, but is it, is that something specific, um, or a specific uh, set of parameters for your, for, um, for people to abide by for this? Well, the synthesis effect is, is learning to live your life virtually free of suffering. That's the effect of using the process. Uh, you know, you, you gave, you use the whole term, the McGrail Oracle model, uh, but I just call it synthesis. And what it is essentially is a process that helps both the conscious, logical, cognitive part of our mind, which we're most, u- most used to working with, and the much more powerful subconscious spiritual part of the mind. It's a process through a variety of techniques, models, and traditions that helps the two parts of the mind work together to create or synthesize change, whatever that may be. It can be emotional change. It can be behavioral change. It can be uh, performance improvement, but it's just a process that enhances the process of making change. And it includes hypnotherapy. It includes NLP, which you mentioned earlier. 
It includes a, a variety of models and techniques that I developed that are proprietary, but that really help the two parts of the mind work together very powerfully and very quickly so that the changes that people want to create in their lives happen quickly and profoundly. And with practice, you can very quickly, comparatively speaking, learn to live your life virtually free of suffering. It's never perfect, but it's amazing how pain-free life can be once you learn how to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of uh, learning to teach yourself how to stay in that positive state, right? Much longer. Well, it's learning to create the positive state. And create it, and yeah. And then it's learning how to maintain it. Right. Um, create and maintain. It applies to any areas of your life. And the effect of it all is, as I said, learning to live your life virtually free of suffering. And when you get, when you get to that stage, and it just takes some practice and commitment, as I mentioned before, it's amazing how wonderfully life just sort of unfolds for you and you begin manifesting the things you want that you thought maybe you could never have. And you begin living the life of your dreams and everybody has the ability of doing that with the right assistance. And so that's what the synthesis process is all about. It was, it's helping people make those changes quickly and profoundly and then helping them maintain them. Right. Right. And so when you're saying how it, you know, it, it takes time depending on, you know, it could be several sessions or a few sessions for people to help make these changes, mm -hmm. um, you know, with their mindset and everything. Do you feel a lot of the deep rooted um, habits that aren't necessarily serving us? Are those more rooted in the subconscious part of the mind? Absolutely. And that, right. And so that's what really takes the uncovering and the peeling back the layers to see what's, what's, you know, what's causing us to not necessarily, you know, um, maintain or, or get to that high level of performance we're desiring? Yeah, a lot of people don't realize it, but the, the, the conscious part of the human mind is only about 10% of the mass of the mind. The vast majority and power of the human mind is subconscious. It's operating below our awareness. And the easiest way to think about it, metaphorically speaking, is the subconscious is like a three-year-old child that will believe whatever it's told whether it's good for it or bad for it. And it's also very much, metaphorically speaking, like a computer. Once it's programmed with its patterns, its habits, it will play those programs over and over and over and over again. They become automatic. They're happening subconsciously. You know, people that are having issues in their lives, uh, say lack of self-confidence or a fear or a phobia, they're not doing it on purpose. They don't say, oh, okay, it's time to get on an airplane. I think I'll have a panic attack. It just happens automatically because that's the program that they've gotten. And the subconscious mind is so much more powerful. It processes 40 times faster than the conscious mind. And so if you want to make a change, you have to get to that subconscious level. And it's in, a, in essence, metaphorically reprogram your computer so that it plays the way you want it to rather than the way it's been programmed to right right because yeah that's what our brains are is, a, is like a supercomputer that just needs to be taught the right patterns of behavior and then you know we can help help it stay in that in that really good state right i like to think of the brain as the the central processing unit of the mind uh through which both the conscious and the subconscious operate because we know that's the case and the brain is is an electrical instrument it works on neural circuits and so once these circuits are formed they become permanent the beautiful thing is the human brain has the ability of breaking those circuits and rewiring new ones and i suppose that's the the whole process of whether it's hypnotherapy or psychotherapy or the synthesis process it's all about helping the brain create new neural patterns so that the old inputs create new outputs does does hypnotherapy have a similar effect to uh like daily meditation like with helping with like the creating the new neural pathways because it's a very similar technique right well as i said they are very similar state they are very similar in the way they feel hypnosis is a state of consciousness that works at the level of the neocortex which is a very primitive area of the brain so hypnosis the best way to think about it is two tools hypnosis is a tool a process that helps us create change quickly meditation is a process or a tool that helps us maintain the change systemically so once you've made the change you want to continue it you want it to last that's where meditation comes in right right okay yeah because i've always 
because I've always been interested in the two and I've been doing meditation for about three years and I definitely noticed a hu- I've noticed a huge difference. Mm-hmm. I started it, I started it ever since I left banking because I was at a crossroads with banking. I did it for four years and um, I really enjoyed it. I was really fascinated uh, with it for, for those four years, but I started to notice that my stress level and my anxiety was just getting too high and I was going into work before meetings. I was just like, super anxious and and tense and i'm like you know and i'm like you know i got to make some change because going into work and in that reactive state it just it was it was definitely hindering my performance because i was trying because i you know in when you're in financial services you have to meet certain sales quotas and and i was doing it for the first three years because i was at this affiliate bank of the, the larger bank that i ended up working for for a year and then when i transitioned to the larger bank it just that's when my yeah like for some reason my performance just wasn't there and my my um i just wasn't i didn't have that same feeling like when i was of like happiness and fulfillment and meeting in in the new role at the other the other bank so utilizing the meditation that's what helped me you know develop that more calm calm state to you know before my meetings and stuff like that before i left so it is probably the single most powerful technique available to to create that state of balance and focus and calmness and it's been in use for 7000 years as has it, as as has hypnosis and what i tell people all the time is if if something's been around for 7000 years there's got to be a reason for it and the reason is it works really really well so i'm glad you discovered it and i'm glad you're using it cuz the key is consistency so many people mm-hmm. are either afraid of meditation in western society or they think it's hocus pocus it's it's got nothing to do with any of that and they try it, mm-hmm. but because we're so, you know, programmed now for instant gratification, if it doesn't work instantly, if it's not like an instant fix, they say, oh, I, I tried it, it didn't work. Tried it for three days, four days, tried it for a month. You got to do, as you know, because you're a practitioner, you have to do it consistently, 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 and it is a process. Um, mm-hmm. Or people try meditation and their mind gets distracted, which happens, as you know. Uh, or or they don't feel anything right away, and so they say, well, that didn't work. And, well, it can't work unless you use it, but if you use it consistently, uh, it, you get better and better and better at doing it, and it becomes more and more effective. And even when you've been meditating for years, there are going to be times, and I'm sure you experience this, Alex, when, when you sit down to do a meditation and your mind just isn't going to cooperate. It just happens, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... For instance, this week, like I've been doing it every day, every day this week, but especially yesterday, I was just, it, so, like I'm noticing I'm having to do it more. I'm having to do larger sessions because normally my sessions is five minutes because I like, I prefer to do it first thing in the morning, like as I start work, because that helps prime, you know, give me that prime state. But, you know, like you were saying, like occasionally, you know, some days or some weeks, you're, your mind's just not in it. So it's like, I need that extra time to, to really focus on my breathing because five minutes isn't cutting it. So yesterday I did a session for 10 minutes and that, that put me in a really good state before uh, going to bed. <laughs> Just helped me like really wind down because I, you know, I feel like, a, you know, there's a few people out there that, can, that are listening to this that sometimes you're getting off work and you come home and you have dinner, but you're, you're still thinking about work the entire time as you're eating dinner and it just won't shut off. So sometimes you need to, yeah, like, you know, sit down and, and, and uh, you use that meditation or some sort of breathing to just, you know, calm the mind down because sometimes it can get really busy up there, especially with everything going on right now. Yeah, I, I recommend often uh, two sessions a day and, you know, one of them being maybe 15 to 20 minutes and the other one being 10 or but even five is OK. But a, a couple of times a day uh, works really, really well for most people. And it's just, you know, it just gives you a chance to check out of the everyday grind of life, which is all about do, 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 produce, 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 acquire, acquire, acquire. That's, that's how our society works. And it's become so energetically imbalanced that we, you know, most people are chronically stressed and many, many are anxious. And that was happening before this whole pandemic thing started. <laughs> So if you don't give yourself a chance to balance yourself physically, emotionally, and spiritually, which is what meditation is so beautifully designed to do and does, then you just get wigged out. And you're right, it doesn't shut off. And 
uh, it's a really crappy way to live. Yeah, no, for sure. And like, I like how you said the two sessions a day, because I was, tr- when I was doing research on it, like they did recommend for like, you know, if you have been meditating for a decent amount of time, most people see the most success, you know, with their, you know, staying, staying in that calm state with like 15 to 20 minutes a day or like for, for one session at a time. So yes. I'm going to start probably bumping that up, especially when I'm feeling like, you know, a little bit more stressed out. Like I know the, the extra time will help. So. Yeah, often it often does, and you know sometimes you, if you're really into it, you end up sitting there for a half hour or an hour, you know, and then other times it's five minutes is all you can really do. But if you do it consistently, that's the key to mm-hmm. long term uh, effectiveness and success. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure our listeners want to know there, John. Um, but um, what would be uh, what what kind of um, do you work with any professional athletes? I do. I work with athletes from all kinds of sports, baseball players, football players, basketball players, uh, golfers, skiers, gymnasts, figure skaters um, at all levels from, you know, usually high level amateurs that want to get better to absolutely top professionals that want to be the best. That's awesome. It's a lot of fun. I like working with athletes because they're dedicated, they're committed, and they will they do the process. They're used to going to practice every day, so they don't mind working and doing the practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because the one thing that I've noticed as a pattern with athletes, you know, it, it's 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 in business professionals and and professionals in their careers as well, but is the whole uh, the whole visualization before their practice or before their games, right? That's what I find super intriguing. And um, Kobe Bryant was a big proponent and Michael Jordan, for that matter, uh, were both big proponents of like the whole visualization before the game. Michael Jordan used to say he was always in the moment. And then Kobe Bryant would, he, he, he would say he would get up like at four or 5 a.m. And, you know, and practice wouldn't start till eight. And he would usually train, he'd usually train at like five, but he would need 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. just to sit there you know, either in his bedroom reading or just staring at the ceiling, just priming his mind to get in that state before he trained and before his practice and games. So that whole visualization thing, I can really relate to that. And, and I know there's some other people out there as well. can probably relate to it as well because that's what, um, yeah, helps kind of like helps me, especially like if I, like I'm a really visual learner. So I need to like, when you, when you're, when you're like, creating a picture for people and you're like some sort of visual, I, I really relate to that. And it helps me um, really like change my mindset. Yeah. Well, most top performers, most top athletes use it because you can visualize what you want with your conscious mind. And once you've programmed it, then you just let the subconscious computer take over and you're not thinking anymore. Guys like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and you know, the very best of the best, they're not thinking when they're playing. They're just doing it. They've already pre-programmed their computer to, to do it. And that's what makes them so great. Mm, yeah, and it's, and it's an incredible thing too. And, uh, and then since, since you have your, also your, your background and your acting and TV and multimedia, have you also worked with any uh, actors as well? Many, many, many. I'm having, you know, my office is here in L.A. I work with a lot of <laughs> I uh, writers, dancers, musicians, producers, directors, but a lot of actors. Uh, at, and again, at all levels from people that are brand new and are just trying to get over the, the you know, the fear of doing it to, to, you know, very accomplished people who you would instantly recognize if they walked into your room. Because, the, the you know, the best want to get better and and. Um, as I said earlier, the difference between good and great, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right on. Well, if there's anything else you wanted to add there about um, your, your synthesis effect book there, John, I think you've, you've covered a lot of it already probably. Well, actually, there's a, a, a lot more in the book than we've had a chance to discuss. But, you know, just again to say it is, it's a process that I developed that, hel- that helps people create change and transformation in their lives quickly and profoundly. And, um, you know, if anybody's interested, they can reach out to me. I'm, I'm available through my websites, hypnotherapylosangeles.com, all one word, hypnotherapylosangeles.com or drjohnmcgrail.com is my other site. 
uh, and my phone numbers and emails are there. And if people reach out, they have questions. I always answer them personally. I don't have my people do it. So um, hopefully we've stim stimulated a little curiosity out there. And the book is available on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com in both paperback and uh, ebook. And I really appreciate you, uh, you uh, giving me the shout out. That's, that's really nice of you. Yeah, John, like really appreciate your time today and uh, had an excellent interview with you. And um, what uh, are you what what social media platforms are you the most active on right now as well? Are you still doing like YouTube videos? Do you do that for your content um, or which ones are you the most active on so people can try and uh, find your content as well? Well, there's a ton of content on my YouTube channel, Dr. John. YouTube channel. Yeah, and I'm 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 not producing as many this summer as I was again because of the situation I'm yeah, just so yeah. busy with clients because there are so many people that are stressed and anxious that really need help managing that. And this mm -hmm. process works very quickly, usually two or three sessions. They're, they're you know, feeling really good. Uh, but yeah, YouTube, my, I've got my series, A Better You in a Minute or Two. I think there's 46 or 47 episodes and more coming. Um, Facebook, Dr. John McGrail, Hypnotherapy, LinkedIn. And uh, I don't do a lot of Instagramming, but I am on Instagram as well. So there's right on. There's a ton of content, uh, and I would yeah. And I again, uh, I certainly encourage people to go take a look, and maybe that may stir up some curiosity, and then they can reach out and we can have a chat. Sounds good. And is there any other um, any other uh, um, people in your profession that that you that you know of that mu that may want to come on the mindset podcast to discuss? You know, just a lot of the same similar things as yourself to help our, our listeners with. Uh, improve their mental health, their mental state, and their personal psychology? You know, there's nobody that just comes to mind instantly, uh, to be quite honest with you. I, would, I can't just say, oh, yeah, call so-and-so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for one. sure. Uh, you know, Sounds yeah, good. Uh, there are – a lot of people don't like to do this kind of thing for whatever reason. I happen to enjoy it a lot, but I certainly will uh, keep that question in mind, and if anybody pops into my consciousness, I'll let you know. Sounds good. Really appreciate your time today, John, and uh, you take care. Okay, Alex, thank you very much. Have a, have a stay safe and healthy. You as okay, well. Okay, take care. Take bye care. Bye. bye. I hope you all enjoyed this special guest series episode brought to you by RadioGuestList.com. Again, this is your host, Alex Muir, and if you'd like to learn more about kind of what I do and this podcast, Mindset Podcast. Um, you can check me out on my social media. I always post all my links of my social media in every episode that I post. And I share all my posts, uh, my podcast posts on my LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. So you'll be able to check out the podcast links on there. So if you want to connect with me, get to know me, I will be answering messages on there um, if you have any questions. And again, if you want to hear more episodes like these or if you have any feedback please let me know uh in uh, on social media you can send me a message or you can uh yeah feel free to follow my uh, podcast and uh be sure to you know keep keep checking in and see what i'm what i'm up to i really appreciate everyone that listens to my podcast and uh hope you guys all enjoyed and see you all next time take care I hope you all enjoyed that special guest series episode 28 with Dr. John J. McGrail, PhD. Me and John had a lot of fun during this interview and I wanted to uh, showcase um, how, to, how to get in touch or connect with John. If you're someone that wants to take your, your mindset to the next level, if you need any mindset sh uh, shift tips, mindfulness techniques, um, and you want to learn a combination or a little bit of hypnotherapy and uh, meditation, um, you can check out John's website, drjohnmcgrail.com, or you can reach out to John on his website there. He's also active um, and has uh, his YouTube channel, <laughs> Dr. John uh, McGrail, and you can also read his book, The Synthesis Effect, and you can uh, find his book on Amazon, and Barnes and Noble uh, to purchase, and it comes in paperback and ebook format. So, hope you guys all enjoy this episode, 
and stay tuned for next time. Take care.